go through. Let me see what you okay. would do. Okay, first of all, I was just going to say, you ready? Mm, hold on. Oh, you're okay. We have a tape machine at the uh, Wilmington Comedy, Comedy Cabaret, which is nice. Mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, you get three. I'm in there for three shows. I got three, three oh, tapes that I can great. tape. It's not bad. That shadow is that going to? No, it's a flat shadow. Oh, okay. It's fine. All right. Okay. Uh, now, just run through what you would do here. Okay. Okay. This is this is this is where I, I book myself. Basically, uh, this is my desk. This is my professional comedian's uh, uh, folder right here. And I sit down basically, and uh, I call around and I uh, try to get myself booked. Is what I do. Yeah. Try to get work. What? What do you? How do you make a pitch for yourself? Oh, uh, I would just call up and I would say, uh, but see, I want to I make that as 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 a, as a second part. You okay. know what I mean? All right. You mean like I like I explain that to you, and then it's like. And then it's like you're you're catching a picture of me, yeah. cut, making the call. Okay. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So we would actually you'd have to cut it. You know okay. What I mean? Fine. All okay. Right. And so now now I would just like like I was making the call. Fine. Okay. okay. Hi. How you doing? Yeah. This is Pat O'Donnell, a comedian. Yeah. I'm uh, looking for a booking in your show. Um, what was that? <laughs> you wouldn't book me uh, if hell froze over. <laughs> hey, did you hear about the two Polacks that went ice fishing in hell? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hello? Hung up. Okay. Do you have another joke? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Give me another That's one. That's the only one I prepared. Oh, uh, um. You want me to make just, another one? Yeah, okay. Yeah, you had another one down there. Let me think. Um, oh, I have other jokes. Yeah, I'm just thinking about something on the phone. Uh, right there. Think of anything right now. Yeah, all right. All right. Um, when you uh, do, you, is this is this sort of a creative room for you? Would you think of? Oh no, you said it happens anywhere, like McDonald's and so. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we can do that downstairs. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is there anything else we can do up here? No, I was going to show you this stuff, but that's all right. Oh, would you take a shot of that? Shot? Yeah, that's. That, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is my. This is my. Uh, this is my picture of Mother Teresa. This is from, that's actually Mother Teresa's autograph right there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Dad sent him money. I got to keep what, it. <laughs> what was, what was he, oh, money was sent to her. Yeah, yeah. She actually signed that, but Mom swears that Mother Teresa didn't sign that. That's not her autograph. I think they just stamped that on there is what they did. <laughs> what else? Okay. Uh, that's about it. What about this? This is, uh, this is a, uh, article of, uh, about Sam Kinison, one of my favorite, favorite comedians. I really like him. Oh, it's not about you. Nah, nah, nah. Okay. And this right here is my, uh, my name badge from when I played basketball at Wesley. Mm -hmm. And then I could tell you, we can maybe ask, I could tell you that story downstairs about Mom yelling. They can run you know, any time, and they they're used more than once. Oh, okay. I mean, it's like a during a two-year period, right. they can be run a number of times. Right. So we like yeah. to have them sort of timeless. Cool. Okay. I will stop you if I feel that you didn't make the answer self-contained enough. Okay. Sure. And we'll just have you redo it. Okay. Okay. And time, are you ready, Pat? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Pat, have you always been interested in comedy? Uh, I've always been interested in comedy, I think, uh, ever since a young age, ever since a young age. Uh, in fact, when I was in fifth grade, I used to go in, like, in front of the class, I'd do impressions. I start off, you know, my first impression ever was uh, James Cagney. James Cagney, I used to, you dirty rat, you killed my brother, you know, I'm going to get you for that. Of course, we don't do that anymore. I don't do that anymore. It's an old impression now, but, uh, 
it's uh yeah, I've always uh, always been like uh, at the college parties. I would stand up and uh, I would be doing Howard Cosell. Hello again, everyone. This is Howard Cosell. And when people are drunk, you know, they laugh at just about anything. You know, so. John Wayne? Well, I'll tell you what there, you little rooski. You gotta get the heck out of Afghanistan or I'm coming after you. Yeah. <laughs> have, have you had family support? for your interest in comedy? Well, my mom um, at first was not uh, not real happy about it. Now, could oh, you, I'm okay, sorry. Good. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah oh, okay, could you say the question again? Sure. Have you had family support for your interest in comedy? I haven't always had, uh, I guess I never, I didn't have support, I think, for my mom when I first, I didn't do that one right either, did I? No, that's all right, okay. go ahead, do it again. Okay. I'm going to take how, how would I best phrase it? it I want to say is that... Is it the first time in your family that there is a comedian? Yes. Okay. okay, well, wait a minute. I'm well, thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Because it's it's, there's never been a comedian in my Well, family. no, I like the support thing. Oh, okay. Um, have you had uh, family support for your interest in comedy? I, uh, I didn't get much support from my family when I, when I first started in comedy. Um, in fact, my mom, well, what did she say? She said, You're crazy! Is what she said, basically. She, uh, she wasn't real thorough because mom said at one point in time she hates comedians. Yeah, she used to she used to love me. Now she just kind of likes me. <laughs> All right, she doesn't like me. She she hates me. She wished she'd like to trade me in on a new son. <laughs> she says this one broke. I don't know. <laughs> Does she come to your performances? You know, my mother has uh, she has seen me once, and believe it or not, she was having a good time. I saw her having a good time. In fact, I, uh, I even saw her laugh at, at a sex joke, and uh, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Has it been difficult though to do as much as you want to in comedy? Uh. You know, it is a tough road, I think, when you take uh, on, I started out doing open mics uh, in comedy up in uh, about a little over two years ago of the Comedy Factory outlet in Philadelphia. And uh, I was going there for about three months and you wait all night to get on and you finally get on and there's five people left <laughs> and they've seen 26 comedians and it gets kind of tough, but I got five minutes together and Andy Scarpati saw me one night and he, uh, he gave me a lot of uh, uh, support and um, put me on on weekends before a nice crowd and has really helped me work out my routine. Scarpati is? Scar uh, Andy Scarpati of uh, the Comedy Cabaret. He has uh, clubs uh, all over the, uh, the Delaware Valley in the tri-state area and um, it's good, good clean comedy and a quality show. People will see it every time they go to a Comedy Cabaret production. Mm -hmm. Do you earn enough from comedy today uh, to support yourself? Um, I do okay. I'm doing all right with that. <laughs> That's a tough question for me. Yeah, all right, because see, <laughs> well, because I don't want to say I make a lot of money. No, okay. Or I don't want to even say how much I make. All right, I don't want you to say how much you make. Okay. But, um, you can say about, uh, well, however you put it, as nebulously okay. as you want to Okay, put here, okay, I'm ready now. Okay. Uh, do you earn enough from comedy to support yourself? You know, and I have to tell you that uh, they don't pay anything hardly at all when you when you when you do comedy, and and I'm struggling. That's why I'm here at home. I'm here, you know, and it's uh, it's tough. It's tough because uh, they just they, you you've heard the starving comics. That's me. That's me. You look pretty healthy. <laughs> <laughs> why do you you must there must be pressure on you, I I suppose, from your peers about uh, getting your own place, your own apartment. Um, and there's never been any pressure for me to, to, to move out because none of my friends want to live with me, so <laughs> they say, no, Pat, that's all right. Stay with Mom. It's okay. Does your mother wait up for you? And it's great because Mom, is, we're more like roommates because Mom doesn't wait up for me now. She just, uh, she used to. She used to be waiting, you know, like when I was in high school, she used to wait for me. And I'd come in and you'd, you'd see that there's like the, the house is dark and there's a cigarette off in the middle of the room. <laughs> Yeah, I think Mom waited up with the lights out just to surprise you. You know, Pat, you still you still have a part-time job at Sears selling. I I do yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, and I still I still uh, I I still work. Like I said, I'm a starving comic. I still work part-time at Sears. Yeah, I get. I, people come up, they ask me stupid questions like, "You work here?" And I say, "No, I know somebody in the badge department." <laughs> Either that, or they had a courtesy ask you a full question. They look at you and go, "Luggage." I like look back and go, "Suitcases, <laughs> bathroom, toilet."
full day yeah. during well, the week. 10, you, 10, 15 minutes. You perform usually Friday and Saturdays, don't you? No, I have gigs during the week, too. During the week? Yeah. A lot of colleges? I did two colleges this week. Did Elizabethtown and Brandywine. Mm -hmm. how, how far from home do you, you know, have you made these appearances? About four hours away is the farthest Penn State. Mm -hmm. That's good. Do you find a special you know, affinity from the college students? Um, colleges are different. It, it's, it's, um, uh, what do you mean by affinity? I, don't know. I mean, do they especially like someone like yourself? I mean, do, do they identify with you as opposed to someone who is perhaps older? I, I think that's why Andy um, gives me the work, to be honest, I think. Cause I, closer in age to them. I guess, yeah. I, I did, I did um, Elizabethtown, and they were great. I started off with that McDonald's joke because it was just right there. They loved it. In fact, a couple people started clapping. And then I just did, you know, I just eased right into my routine. I was talking to the people, kids up front. I didn't curse one time. That's another thing you don't curse. Uh, Jack Nicholson did one time. That was it. And I, I didn't straight through clean. And that makes you feel good. I'm sorry, are you, are you? I'm rolling. Oh, you are? Huh? Ah, okay, thanks a lot, Pat. Okay. Uh, what was the question I asked you? Oh, um, you still, Pat, you, you still keep your part-time job at Sears. Yes, because as I said, I'm a starving comic. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Go ahead, do it again. Okay. Uh, yeah, I still work uh, part-time at Steers, Steers, because as I said, I, I am... Say again. <laughs> at Steers. <laughs> okay. What did I say, Steers? Steers. Steers, okay. Um... <laughs> uh, I, uh, I still work a part-time job at Sears, uh, about 10, 15 hours a week, because as I said, I, I am a, a starving comic, yeah. It's weird, because people come up and they ask you stupid questions like, do you work here? <laughs> I say, no, I know somebody in the badge department. <laughs> and that, or they say, uh, say, you don't have the courtesy to ask you a full question, they like to look at you and go, luggage? I like to look back and go, uh, suitcases? <laughs> Bathroom, toilet, are we playing password? How does this work? There was a 400-pound guy who was looking at a microwave last week, and I was going, friend, this is the last thing you need. Get your food any faster. <laughs> you need to slow that intake down. What you need is a freezer. That's what you need. But you surely could live without that job, couldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> You're pressing on that one. Uh, I, I'm getting ready to, but I don't want to say that. It's okay. just, right. see, because I have to I claim taxes and okay. stuff. Oh, okay, fine, okay. All right, turn this uh, uh, Pat, where, where do your ideas come from? Because you, you, don't, you don't buy material, do you? you no. Know, it's all your own material. Uh, okay. Uh, how, do you, how do you conceive of your material? You know, um, ideas come to you, like, out of the blue all the time. You just, you just never know. Like, I was sitting in uh, my buddy's car one day, and he has an auto shade. It's, it keeps your car being cool, and on the back of it, it says, warning, do not drive with auto shade in place. <laughs> and I just started saying, who's this for? <laughs> Some guy wrecks his car, finally sees the warning, and goes, oh, you're supposed to take it out. Gosh, I didn't know. <laughs> you know? How else have you been inspired? Oh, let's see. Um, you get inspiration. You have. You get a comic of inspirations. I think from uh, all over. All over. I was at McDonald's the other day. I saw a non-smoking section at McDonald's, and I thought that was redundant, because <laughs> if you're eating at McDonald's, you really don't care about your health anyway. Somebody's over there smoking a cigarette. Excuse me. Excuse me. Could you quit smoking that thing that's going to give you cancer and give me cancer? While I'm eating this thing that's going to give me cancer and give you cancer, huh? Do you mind? What's the toughest audience you can remember? What, what, what did they do in their reaction that made the appearance very tough? I think the toughest audience you can ever work is one that is just loud. It's a bar room. They're, they're there to drink and not really see you. And uh, eventually you're just up there and uh, you're, you're giving a lecture to yourself, basically, is what it is. <laughs> What, what is it, I mean, what to you would be tremendous if it happened? I mean, what, what is it, in the sense, you're aspiring to? Would you, do you hope to make it in TV and nightclubs and motion pictures? What, what is it you want for yourself in the future? Okay, the main reason that when I first got into comedy, uh, I wanted to be an actor. I acted in college. I was a Wesley College player. And um, I wanted to become an actor. And now, I, so I figure stand-up comedy would be a good springboard. And I, um, I started doing it, and now I actually like it. I really, and I'm getting better and better. And I just enjoy doing stand-up right now. Yeah, if something else, like a, a, a commercial or something, or acting part would come along, of course I would like to do it, because that's eventually you know, what I would like to do. But I really enjoy doing stand-up now, and I just want to better my act and move up the show, basically. Get to a middle. Or... Mm -hmm. I mean, are there any uh, big prospects out there that uh, 
Now you've got your fingers crossed for it? No. It's just a matter of time. That's, I can't rely right on that at all. How, how many years have you spent? You said you were interested since, since a child, mm -hmm. but how many years have you uh, been making appearances? Well, as I said, I, I, I went to my first open mic a little over uh, two years ago. Mm -hmm. A little over two years ago. And um, I was working for Andy within uh, about four months. I wasn't making a whole lot of money, but as I've gotten better, he's progressed me. And uh, it's, it's working out real good. Mm -hmm. You're about 30 years old. I am 30. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and, okay, wait, uh, we're going to say that. All right. Uh, say that uh, again. You're 30 years old. Yeah, as I say in my act, uh, I'm, I'm 30 years old. I still live at home. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot the first line. Okay. Okay. That's about my mom. Here's uh, the question again. Okay. Um, you're 30 years old? You know, my mom has a cute way of putting my life in perspective. She says, you know something bad? You're a bum. I always say, no, mom, I'm single. I'm 29 years old. I live at home. I'm a leech. <laughs> Let's get this straight, huh? What were you doing, though, before you spent almost full time on comedy? What do you mean? Well, there was a period when you were not spending as much time in comedy as you are now. You were working at other things. I was working at Sears. Always at Sears? Yeah, I've been at Sears for four years. Um, and see, I, I would work. I see, I would work thirty hours. I would work longer. Uh -huh. Now I'm working less. Uh huh. So you spent your time selling. Yeah. In one way or another. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. nothing uh, in there. So I, was, I, was, I, was a, I was an endorser salesman, I was a, um, if you find something you like here, I can elaborate on it. Um, I was a door-to-door -door salesman selling insurance, and I also was a, a car salesman. Mm -hmm. okay. Is there one comedian that you'd like to fashion yourself after? Um, whenever I think about fashioning myself uh, after another comedian, you want to have your own style, but... I think uh, guys like that I really enjoy now are like Jay Leno and uh, Jerry Seinfeld, guys who can be very, very funny but yet very clean because they're clever. And uh, it's a hard thing for me to be clever because I'm Polish, remember, and uh, it's kind of tough. You're part Polish. <laughs> I am half Irish and half Polish. Yes, I go out to bar to get drunk, I get lost is what happens. Does this mean that uh, you're entitled to make Polish jokes? And uh, I think this means that... Um, I can tell as many Polish jokes as I want because I am part Polish and it's just a joke. How can you tell if a Polak's been using your word processor? <laughs> there's, there's white out on the screen. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a great joke. I love that one. <laughs> there's a clear button. Music. As far as the audiences are concerned, do you find that there are sometimes sensitivities about jokes like that? And you know, um, most pe people love Polish jokes. People do love Polish jokes because they're the easiest jokes to get. You just, ha! <laughs> the guy's stupid. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> They're the easiest jokes to get. They are. <laughs> it got stupid. Okay, I get it. Pat, what was the worst experience you had on stage? Mm, let me think. I think the worst experience I ever had on stage was um, I was working a club up in Allentown. There was uh, about maybe 30 or 40 people in the room and they were all just talking and I didn't do very well. <laughs> but I went back there another time and I did real well. So I, I it's like, uh, I don't know, can't elaborate on that. At times like that, have you said to yourself, I'm gonna get out of the business? No. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and you know, but even when there's times on stage, each crowd is different. You're going to have a good crowd, you're going to have a bad crowd, and you live, for the, you live for the good crowd. You live for the good crowd, it's like hitting that good shot on the golf course. It's the same thing. You just, uh, you just, you just wait for it. Most of the crowds are good where I go, so I don't, I, don't, I don't have any problems, basically, with hecklers or anything. And you can handle them, so it doesn't matter. I've seen you identify as Delaware's only resident comedian. Are you really? I am uh, Delaware's only resident comedian. There is a, uh, a very uh, funny um, uh, black woman comic named uh, Bertice Berry, but she is, she's originally from Wilmington, but she plays, uh, I believe, in the other clubs uh, up near where she, I think she's from Kent State now. She works up there. But I'm the only resident, the funniest guy in Delaware. <laughs> okay, that was very good. Was there? Where should I look? You look at me. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and relax. <laughs> relax, Mom. <laughs> Isn't life a bowl of cherries for the comedian of the house? <laughs> um, 
does your son keep you in stitches, Mrs. O'Donnell? Does he, you know, make jokes to you that that uh, make you laugh? Sometimes, not very often. <laughs> <laughs> she can't. She, she's got to answer. Okay, me. wait a minute. Uh, we'll get something out of her. Um, uh, do well, what do you think when you see when you answer me to say? Well, I've been to some of his shows, or one, or whatever. Yeah, answer what you um, what, what have you thought the times that you have been to see your son's performances? Well, I've been to see Pat only once, and uh, I did enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. However, I'm you not... You laughed at that dirty joke, remember that? You were, you were like, going like this? <laughs> remember you were doing that, the no, dirty joke that J.J. Ramirez that told? J.J. <laughs> Ramirez told it. No, no, it was the guy that, guy that got on stage. Something about somebody sitting on somebody's face. Do you remember that? Mm -mm. No, okay. <laughs> no, you did. You were, you was a knee I slapper. Don't remember. Well, you were laughing pretty hard. Is it, um, I mean, is it difficult having a son still living with you at this age? It doesn't. Uh, I don't mind having Pat living here. He, he lives his life, and I live my life. Yeah, we're a team now. Yeah. <laughs> do you do his laundry? <laughs> yes, I, I do his laundry, and... Uh, it's clean, too. I'll tell you, my uh, laundry is clean, and I'm happy about that. Huh? And I cook for him once a week. <laughs> Mom quit cooking a while ago, yeah. Uh, what, what are the, does he have his own chores to do around the house? Uh, the only tour Pat does around the house is cut the grass in the summertime. And I do such a good job at that, too. Do you ever notice the way it's kind of like pretty much manicured? Have you ever noticed that? It's kind of, this is kind of like um, Graceland East, wouldn't you think? Isn't this kind of like Graceland East? We should show them the backyard how, how beautiful right. it is out there. <laughs> That's a good segue to the backyard. <laughs> oh, my. Um, before we do go out, could I just get a couple of shots of them just without the without the microphone just to be used double dandruff it looks like shampoo doesn't it sure it was right next to the denorex okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So you had a very funny experience with your mother. Well, you know, Mom Mom loves to cut corners. She, I ask her to buy Denerick shampoo, but she always wants to buy a bargain. It's always a bargain, right? So she came out with this. She said, double dandering. This will probably be pretty good. So it was in the, uh, in the shower, and I, I put it on. Uh, I la went to lather up my hair, and I put like half the bottle on it. It didn't lather up. And finally, I looked at the back, and was like, it's not shampoo. It's for, it was a great deal, but it, it doesn't, doesn't clean your hair. I didn't, what happened there? I thought it was shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> Double dandering. It was a good price, though, right? Right. That's what counts, I think. <laughs> you know, sometimes uh, people, some psychologists say, have said, are you, um, uh, have said that there is really a fine line between comedy and tragedy, and that, that uh, people who do comedy are often uh, very sad people inside who don't want to show this sadness. Does that apply to you, Pat? Um, I would have. Uh, we got, we got yeah, it was it was a large <laughs> question. I was like, okay, but it's, it, uh, uh, it, it's said sometimes that uh, there's a fine line between comedy and tragedy, and that comedians are actually sad people who are trying to hide their sadness by making light of life and, and making jokes. You know, they, they say there's a uh, fine line in between uh, comedy and tragedy and that, that most comics are, are, are sad people. But I'm, no, I'm not a sad person. In fact, I, I like making light of life and it, it makes you, it, it, uh, it makes tragedy a, a lot better when you, can, when you can look at it on the lighter side and I think it helps you physically and mentally. Has it helped you when you think of some of the tough moments in your life? And I definitely think that it, from, from some of the tougher moments in my life that um, being um, a comedian or take, looking at the lighter side has definitely helped me out. Is that always possible to see a lighter side when, you have, when you've been through some real grim moment? Uh, I think it's always possible if you, if you have faith. And, well, it's hard to explain. <laughs> you don't want to talk about it. Well, it's like... I uh I just believe everything's going to come out in the wash that's all
and it comes on, I don't know. So I feel I may, that's why I guess I'm like I am. Are you generally you know, a high person, I mean, you know, always uh, cheerful? I'm usually um, very cheerful, I think, and um, always uh, looking um, to make fun of something. You know, if, if the opportunity arises, I'm, I'm ready. Is he generally cheerful around you, Mrs. O'Donnell? Generally cheerful. He is generally cheerful. Uh -huh. That helps when you have a roommate. Actually, we don't see a lot of each other. Nah, she gets to bed too late. I'm like in bed like, you know, 10 o'clock. I'm in bed like, you know, 10 o'clock. There she is hanging out with the girls to like 1.30. I'm like, Mom, Mom, come on. Oh, you're just, you're just, you're just you're too old for this. But she says she can hang. She says, Pat, don't you tell me I'm hanging out. I'm, I gotta chase the, uh, I gotta chase some men out there. No, but... Oh, not okay. true. <laughs> uh... Pat. Close that refrigerator. I'm looking for something, Mom. Don't say more. You have to go. Go off. Go shut that refrigerator. This is not my thing. Come on, Mom. This is cool. This is great. This is nice. I like this. I can't do it. Come on. I just say, Pat. You always used to do it before. Tell me to shut the refrigerator. Shut the refrigerator. All right. All right. Okay. I left it open. I didn't mean. Oh, wait a minute. One more. Shut the refrigerator and don't drink from the. I'll go like this. Pat, I drink from that, too. Oh, it's all right, Mom. I'll clean it off. God. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Uh, those are the two things I can think of. <laughs> Lean against the refrigerator and then go out and zip the apartment. We're not getting any sound really on this. What? What am I supposed to do? Clean up. Just put the stuff away. Yeah, oh, I've put away about everything I can. <laughs> Let's go over here. See my dirty cupboards? Close it quick. Okay. Mom, looks like one of the star. I guess, uh, guess I'll have to cut it tomorrow or something. I don't know. Just doesn't want to work. I have to put it away, I guess. Yeah, you have to work maybe tomorrow or something like that. Do it. <laughs> you, know, well, you want me to? You want me to start it and get me put? Okay.
food. I was with the sandwich. And we're in a bar, and his son said, you know what? Let's just make it. I'd like to make it just to walk up to him someday and go. Old man Joe? I thought I was here with things one night. Wilmington, Delaware. Thanks. Thanks for the support there. Yeah. Yes, yeah, doing comedy in Wilmington, Delaware. And my career is really going places, isn't it, Fox? It's a good 10 miles from my house. Rode my bike here, in fact. Uh, oh, gosh. So, uh, what's going on this week? I guess uh, December 7th, 1941. <laughs> A day that will live in infamy. <laughs> Unless your name is George Bush. <laughs> oh, I was sitting back going, George, what are you doing to me, big guy? What are you doing to me? I figured it out, though. I think he was going after the Polish vote. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, it's all right. It's all right. I'm half Polish. I am. I'm half Polish, which means... I'm half-witted, basically, I guess is what it is. Uh, hey, but I'm proud to be Polish, I am. How you guys doing? Huh? I'm proud to be Polish, I am. I'm very proud to be Polish. I'm as proud to be Polish as Dan Quayle is for being in the National Guard, I think. Uh, right up there. I'm an Irishman, too. Do you have any Irish people? Damn, what'd they do, cancel the AA meeting? Yeah. <laughs> Irish, I am. Irish and Polish, which means I go out to the bar to get drunk, I get lost, folks. I do. I swear. <laughs> do you have any Polish people? Where's the Polish people? Right here. Good. And you found the place. Congratulations. I like that. That's good. <laughs> oh, God. No, I love it. I, love it. I am uh, Irish. My mom is all Polish. All Polish. All Polish. She hates Polish jokes. <laughs> I love them. I like to sit there and go, hey, Mom, how can you tell if a Polak's been using your word processor? <laughs> There's white out on the screen. <laughs> I hear a moan there. Is that what I heard? It's a funny joke. Yes, yeah, my mom, she has a cute way of putting my life into respect. She says, you know something, Pat, you're a bum. I said, no, mom, I'm single. I'm 29 years old. I live at home. I'm a leech. <laughs> Let's get this straight, right? Yeah. Mom, I snuck out of the house the other day without my mom being able to say, be careful to me. <laughs> I went nuts. I'm driving out the window with a beer, hanging out, you know. Driving, going out by the state hospital, I'm picking up hitchhikers, you know. I was just going nuts. I don't know, I guess. Irish, Polish, yeah. But Irish people, we have our own day. What is it? St. Patrick's. Patrick's Day, where everybody goes out and does what we do all the time. Right. Get, drink, get drunk, right? 
I mean, you know, like uh, Puerto Ricans would have their own day, like St. Julio's Day. <laughs> Everybody goes out and slashes tires. <laughs> Italians don't have like St. Tony's Day. Everybody opens up the shirt, wears a bunch of gold chains. Yo, what's up? How you doing? <laughs> it was St. Tony's Day, hey! <laughs> and, and the Jewish people don't have any saints, do they? So it'll be like Elijah Day. <laughs> This is the day that you got to dinner with your friends and you're sticking with the check, is what you're doing. Uh, I did that joke in Cherry Hill, New Jersey last week. Ooh. Big mistake, they stoned me. And uh, then they threw bagels. It was kind of crazy, it was. I made from the cream cheese and stuff, it was crazy. That's where I go. Uh, how about any French people? Any French? Good, because they're greasy bastards, folks. Um, <laughs> I saw a survey they did on CNN News. 44% of French men said they only changed their underwear once a week. I know, I'm thinking, what's an underwear commercial look like over there? You know, I did not change my underwear today. And I don't think I'm going to change it to my bed. Why? Because I stuck to my daddy ass. Because I get them off, they're stuck to my daddy ass. Oh, God. Well, anybody, people here like shopping? How many shoppers are out here? <laughs> Uh, I love shopping, I do. I love shopping for gifts. Because every time I go shopping for a gift, I, I smoke a big joint. <laughs> See, this way, when a person's opening up your present, they're looking at you like, were you high when you bought that? <laughs> Matter of fact, I was, Mom. <laughs> Time the power tool seemed like a great idea. I, I'm going to tell you. Uh, but I know a lot about shopping because I used to work at Sears. People come up, they ask you some stupid questions, right? They look at you like, you work here? <laughs> no, I don't work here. I know somebody in the badge department. <laughs> you know, they're not a curse. They ask you a full question. They like to look at you and go, luggage? I like to look back and go, uh, suitcases? <laughs> Bathroom, toilet, are we playing password? How does this work, huh? <laughs> Some people you don't understand. Here's a guy, 400 pounds. He's looking at a microwave. I'm going, friend, this is the last thing you need. <laughs> Get your food any faster, man. You need to slow that intake down. You need a freezer is what you need. <laughs> that stuff's solid, harder to chew, you know? <laughs> uh, does anybody here work for a company where you have to answer the phone? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. good. Yeah. And what do they tell you to do? Tell you to state who you are and state where you are, right? But people never listen, do they? I always answer the phone. Sears Appliances, Pat speaking. It's just Sears. <laughs> no, no, it's Macy's. <laughs> yeah, we're selling Sears appliances now, yeah. <laughs> it's like a retail exchange program, yeah. My name? My name's Fred Flintstone. <laughs> yeah, Marty, sir, you said you're a dick rock. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, it's great, though. You get to work with the different nationalities, you know. An Oriental gentleman came up to me the other day and goes, Oh, excuse me, I have to bring it to microwave back in no good. I put the aluminum foil in there, just like you told me. <laughs> Man, it was like, what did you ride? <laughs> Welcome to America, Hop Sing. Yeah. Uh, the two microwave jokes. Who's got a microwave? Who's got a microwave? I'm going to hear you. Oh, okay. Fly flew into my microwave the other day. And I figured, hey, it's not a cat, but it's worth zapping, right? And, uh... <laughs> so I put it on two minutes. I put it on two minutes, right? And I figure, hey, let's nuke this bitch, right? I open it up after two minutes, the fly flies right away. I said, damn. Two days later, this gigantic fly knocked on my door. <laughs> Where <Remember> me? <laughs> oh, God. So uh, I've been doing a lot of colleges lately. I was at uh, Elizabethtown College uh, just last week. Yes, I stopped in at McDonald's. Stopped in at McDonald's there, and uh, they had a non-smoking section. It's kind of contradictory, isn't it? <laughs> You're eating at McDonald's, I don't really think you care about your health, do you? <laughs> hey, do you mind not smoking that thing's gonna give me cancer while I'm sitting there eating this thing's gonna give me cancer? Huh? You mind? Huh? 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 <laughs> anybody out there got an auto shade? You have an auto shade? Know what I mean? You put it to the sun shield in the front of your car? Have you, have you ever read the back of that? Where it says, warning, do not drive with auto shade in place. <laughs> I, that's what I want to know. Some guy finally, you know, he wrecks his car, he finally sees the warning sign and goes, ah, oh, supposed to take it out. Yeah, ah, oh, jeez. Uh, so I am, uh, I am from, uh, as I said, from Wilmington, Delaware, and uh, I was going through my neighborhood today and I, I saw this guy from DuPont cutting his grass. Yeah, I knew he worked for DuPont because he had like the steel tip boots, the safety goggles, black jacket, hard hat, 
a bunch of pens right here. I see it. And I said, hey, don't you work for DuPont? He went, yeah, how'd you know? <laughs> it's because you're a geek, that's why, yeah. You know, I'm an engineer, yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> did that joke on the radio the other night. Did anybody hear that when I did it on the radio? Yeah. yeah <laughs> I figured there has to be some DuPonters going to work going, was he talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> I was loving it, I was loving it. Yeah, I don't know. So uh, let's see, we got to ask, I was talking about the presidential elections, right? How many, uh, how many Bushmen do we have here? How many Bushmen? <laughs> <laughs> Just about everybody, I thank God. <laughs> and the caucus fans, right? Yeah. But George Bush, yeah, he made a little slip. Didn't he? But he ran a good campaign, don't you think? He beat out uh, Pat Robertson. Yeah. Were anybody here vote for Pat Robertson? <laughs> now, see, I wouldn't vote for him either. Not because he's evangelist. Not because he reminds a lot of people of Jimmy Carter. But if you put a cowboy hat on that guy, he's Sheriff Roscoe from the Dukes of Hazzard, isn't he? <laughs> I want to be president. Goo, 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 goo. <laughs> Dukakis also ran a fine campaign, right? Yeah, did you see? Uh, he's, uh, isn't, this, isn't Dukakis trying to seem like he's some kind of athlete? Have you noticed that? He's like throwing the softball. I've seen him shooting a basketball, walking in a marathon. Saw him last night. Took it too far. Midget wrestling. And, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, did I offend wrestling fans? Because uh, that's one group of people who aren't all there, basically. You know? <laughs> Anybody that can sit in front of the TV and go, no, man, it's real. <laughs> Need some serious psychiatric help, don't you agree? Uh, but the caucus, he did. He ran a great campaign. He beat out uh, Jesse Jackson. How many Jesse fans do we have here? Let me hear you. Ooh, a wave of applause. Ah. Uh, now, that's why Jesse, huh? Yeah, he's got a lot of great ideas, doesn't he? He's got the solution to the Iran-Iraq war. He wants to make it one country, change the last letter to a P, called Iraq. <laughs> Said, send over the Beastie Boys, run DMC. Before you know it, the Iranians down the street going, we were down on Americans once before. We thought they were rotten to the core. But now we have seen a light. We don't want, want no fight. Come and see your missile. So we know we don't want no war. What we want is peace, 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 peace in the Middle East. White boy doing rap, it's disgusting, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> Thoroughly disgusting. I gotta love Jesse though, man. He's, uh, I, I saw him giving a speech last year. He came out and said, Pooh, yeah. I could not get 25 other votes in y'all. And there. Pooh, yeah. I could not finish here for a campaign. And there. Pooh, yeah. I'm not making a present, but well, because I attacked the issues. I'm going, Jess, what the hell are the issues? <laughs> Buy a new truck or something? What is that? And I have nothing against the black president, folks. I just want one that talks like Brian Gumbel. That's what I want. <laughs> Brian Gumble, very eloquent talking black man, wouldn't you agree? Yep. I gotta think he's hanging around the brothers there going, you see me on the morning show, check me out. Was that sweet? Was that sweet? Shit. <laughs> Eat me, David Letterman. Yeah. Um, also a Catholic, there any Catholics here? Yeah. Of course there's Catholics here, right? Catholics everywhere. <laughs> Except church, yeah. <laughs> Don't well, find too many of us there, do you? Show for weddings, won't we, guys? Yeah. Free booze, you're damn right. <laughs> Start asking that burning question. Is this a mass or is this a ceremony? <laughs> See, Catholics want to know this because we want to know exactly how long it's going to be. We're down that complimentary beverages, right? Then even as a mass, we ask the second burning question. Does this count for my Sunday obligation? <laughs> That'll be past 5 o'clock. It's past 5 o'clock somewhere in the world, huh? I don't think the big guy's going to mind, man. The end of the weddings are always the same, aren't they? We're back at the reception. We're a little sloshed up, and they start playing that song. Can anybody do the alley count when they're drunk? No, no. Then the finale. That's when the bride's father dances with the bride to the tune of and she's daddy's little girl. She's heaven, she's spice, she's everything nice. And all the Catholics sit around and go, this is beautiful. <laughs> this is just beautiful. Play Danny Boy, I want to cry some more. <laughs> uh, but as Catholics, we drink, don't we? I guess the premise being, you know, Jesus drank wine. I doubt if he was ever at a party, though, going, You guys want to see a miracle or something? Come on out by the pool, I'll do some moonwalking for you. 
tough joke to laugh at, and a few people going to hell here, I think. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Catholics, you ever skip mass a little kid? You ever skip mass? Sure you did, right? You always managed to get one of those church bulletins, though, didn't you? Go walk in the house, look at your receipt. <laughs> yeah, my mother had mercy. Actually, I was smoking dope and it was, what the hell, yeah? <laughs> Better yet, it's Ash Wednesday, find an old cigar in the street. Here we go. <laughs> Pop will never know, right? It's Catholics, still got a mass? You still got a mass, Catholics? Still got a mass? They, they see, a lot of Catholics don't go anymore. They say they don't get anything out of it. Now, what do they expect? Prizes? And Johnny, tell him what he's won. Communion, come on down. That's why so many Catholics go to bingo. Prize money. That's what it is. A little mellow there, wasn't it? It's kind of just laid out there, yeah. Uh, we got a lot of crazy reverends in the news, right? Jimmy Swagger, Jimmy Baker, and this new guy named uh, Reverend Donald Wildman. Have you read about him? This is the guy that said Mighty Mouse was snorting cocaine. Did you see that? Anybody see that? And the thing is, the producers of the show said, no, 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 that was Magic Crush Flowers. The Reverend says there's no such thing as Magic Crush Flowers, that was cocaine. Thinking, Red, no such thing as Mighty Mouse. <laughs> Cartoon! I guess Scooby Doo's on volume. Is that the way this works? <laughs> Oh, God. So, uh, you guys like cartoons, I guess. I see that. Yeah. This is my impression of Popeye and olive oil making love. Oh, yeah. Oh, she does it so good. Oh, it's here. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, Popeye, you're so kinky with your pie. Thank you. Thank you. Now blow me down. <laughs> kind of amusing, you know, cartoon characters making love. But what if they live normal lives? When they go out for New Year's Eve, what would they be like on New Year's Day? Elmer Fudd on New Year's Day. Oh, I feel terrible. I didn't drink that much. I think that last we went, it must have swept me a quailer. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! So you getting drinks? You getting your drinks, sir? It's good. All right. See, women drinking, huh? I saw a survey they did on women drinking. They asked women a bunch of questions. One of the questions they asked them was if they became less particular in choosing a sexual partner while drinking. <laughs> Only eight percent of the women said they did. Not thinking guys. Got to be a huge contrast here. <laughs> we got to be up near hundred <laughs> percent. Now, this is true. This means a woman can drink five or six beers and Willie Nelson will still look like Willie Nelson. <laughs> but a man drinks five or six beers, he'd screw Willie Nelson, wouldn't he? Isn't that it? Isn't that it? <laughs> That's the way that works, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, so, uh, yeah. So, you guys still having sex? <laughs> Scary out there, isn't it? It is. I saw where you can get AIDS from a mosquito. Yeah, but don't worry about it. I did a little research. I found it's just a nasty rumor being spread by the makers of Off and 612. <laughs> you know there's some guy out there buying cases of that stuff, and there's another guy out there going, I swear to God, I got it from a mosquito. Jeez. <laughs> Came up to me and went, buzz, buzz. Buzz, buzz. <laughs> I got bit by a mosquito just the other day and I was a little nervous, but lucky for me, that little guy was wearing his condom. God! <laughs> Where the hell did he get that thing anyway? Huh? It's gone too far. I got a French tickler in my Cracker Jack box the other day, folks. And, uh... <laughs> yeah. Have you seen the condom commercial? Stop a killer, use a condom. Have you seen them? Have you seen this one? I'm cooking the condoms! Cooking the condoms! <laughs> Think after a while, these condom commercials have your cute little jingles like your regular commercials, you know, like. Rubberonis, the San Francisco tree. Rubberonis, the flavor can't be beat. Take it out of pocket, put it on your woody. Hold his baby, he's really a goodie. Rubberonis, the San Francisco tree. Or you need a condom for your wiener. That's what we truly want to see. Cause if you have a condom for your wiener, you can stay here, hey, yeah, heat's free. And here's an actual condom commercial. Guy comes out and he goes, Have you driven a Trojan lately? <laughs> okay, 
stay down those nights. Still that might do. So they have no money, but I love the screw. Ay, 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 ay. Pretty soon, folks, you're going to see a commercial with people running in the street singing, We're wearing bone aroni to cover our baloney. Bonaroni's really fit. Bonaroni's they don't split. Bonaroni's your safe sex kid. Hooray for Bonaroni. Thank you very much, little man. Thank you all. It's a great crowd. You're great. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. You guys are a super crowd. Give yourselves a hand. All right. All right, you all worked up, got some energy, you ready, huh? Yeah. Now a little bit more, huh? Yeah. All right, because we got two super acts for you right now, ladies and gentlemen. I want to introduce this first gentleman to you. He has uh, appeared at the Tropicana in Atlantic City. He also just got back with a big tour of the South, and his career is really taking off. So ladies and gentlemen, let's have a warm welcome, Mr. Jim Carroll. Give him a big hand, come on. Where's over here? You guys are pissed off. Oh, That's good to have here. I know, Terry just won the Masters. Look at that shit. That's the Masters. Green jacket, won the Masters. Okay, we don't watch golf. Okay, moving right along. I'm in a good mood. I uh, Sorry about that call. July, I but I had it in my head not to. Going on the road, on the road. Well, for Jimmy Swagger. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot. Pretty excited about that. I have that on TV. Yeah, Jim Baker's coming along. We're all getting late. It's going to be a blast. Cut it all off. Yeah, we're kind of... What are they going to do? I'm just in a good mood, basically. He, uh, he was actually on the road with him. He was in Jerusalem. He said 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 he was in Jerusalem. He